I love a good cruise hack because it's awesome to have a little tidbit, a little secret that maybe other people don't know about that you can take full advantage of on your cruise. And some of these are major, some of these are very minor, but regardless of the scale of it, it's always nice having something really cool to be able to take advantage of it, certainly. And over the years, we've accumulated a lot of different tips and tricks and secrets here at RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. And I wanted to share with you some of these hacks that can save you time, money, or both in the process. And who doesn't love that, right? And with that in mind, I wanted to share some of the best vacation hacks I think are worth doing on any Royal Caribbean cruise. These are hacks that I've done, others have done, and quite frankly, they're repeatable and easy to use. And I really swear by them as really good ways to enhance your vacation. And when we say cruise hacks, I'm not talking about like general tips and tricks we've shared, like, you know, go to the helipad on Voyager class cruise ships for a good view. I'm talking about things that really kind of stand out a little bit in order to get a better experience overall. Our first hack is a real game changer, especially if you're on a smaller cruise ship in which storage space is very limited, and that is to use magnetic hooks. Because storage space is so limited in most cabins to begin with, and you've got a lot of stuff that you're bringing with you, one great trick that I learned about recently is to invest in magnetic hooks that hold things up like jackets, dresses, hats, swimsuits, and pretty much anything you might have. Because the cabin walls are made out of metal, you can stick magnetic hooks pretty much anywhere, including the ceiling, and greatly expand your storage options. Of course, you can get these magnetic hooks at a lot of places. Should be among them, Amazon. And that way, you have the chance to expand a lot of your storage opportunities, especially things like wet bathing suits. It's really helpful. Number two cruise hack is something I want you to try because I read about this on the Royal Crane blog message boards. A username by the name of Free Girl shared, I guess, her favorite hack. And that is if you enjoy the frosted coffee at Chick-fil-A, she says it's simple to recreate on board. Basically, go to the Diamond Lounge and get two shots of espresso. She assumes that those with the beverage or refresher package could easily get espresso as well from the bars with coffee or at Cafe Promenade. Then, ask for an empty beverage cup at the Windjammer and pour in the espresso. Then, go to the soft serve ice cream machine and fill the cup with the vanilla soft serve, mix together, and you'll have a delicious frosted coffee. This is something I actually am going to go try on my next cruise, but I'm curious if anybody else has ever tried this out themselves. Our next hack is to plan to do the signature activities on your cruise on the first day of your sailing. One easy way to figure out who's cruised before is see which guests are hitting up the flow rider, the pools, and the water slides on the first day of the cruise. Now, it may not occur to a lot of new cruisers that these activities are open on embarkation day or that the lines for them are nearly non-existent. Remember, a lot of people are getting on the ship their bathing suits are packed away in their luggage. They're not thinking about the fact that they can go and take advantage of these awesome activities and that later on in the cruise, when everybody does have their bathing suits, the lines are going to be ridiculous. So in order to take advantage of places like the rock climbing wall, zip lining, or mini golf, be sure to pack or even wear sneakers or athletic wear on board. If you're interested in aquatic activities, pack a bathing suit, flip-flops, and sunscreen in your backpack that you bring on the ship not the stuff that you give to the porters. Now, you can usually change in a bathroom near the pool areas if you need to, if you don't want to wear, of course, your bathing suit underneath your clothes. Another really good cruise hack for people that have gone on a lot of cruises before is to skip a port day. Visiting the ports of call your ship will visit can be a real highlight for anybody, but if you've been to these ports before or perhaps you're not really seeing anything tremendously appealing, you can always stay on board the ship. This is especially true on maybe a brand new cruise ship like Icon of the Seas, in which maybe you're new to cruising, but you know what? You know there's so many cool things you want to take advantage of. So instead, Royal Caribbean ships offer a ton to do on board, and long lines can make it difficult to do it all during sea days. This is especially true if you're on a shorter sailing, and it might be really advantageous to stay on board the ship during a port day, and that way take advantage of all the ship has to offer. Long-time cruisers will often stay on board during a port day in order to take advantage of discounts at the spa, wide open pool decks, and shorter lines for signature activities. And yes, there will be places to eat while your ship is docked. Another favorite cruise hack of mine, something I've talked about a lot on this channel, but it is still worth mentioning, and that is, of course, to reprice your cruise after you book it. This tried and true strategy is for cruisers who live in countries that allow price adjustments, like the United States, Canada, and some others. What you really want to do is book a cruise as soon as you know you want to go on that cruise and then reprice if the fare drops all the way up until final payment date. Royal Caribbean allows cruisers to reprice their cruise at the lower price if the price for that cruise goes down at any time before final payment. I have to admit that if you're booking on your own, basically you're going through Royal Caribbean, people have reported a lot of issues getting this done, but if you go work with a travel agent, this has never been an issue. I get this done 
all the time. It really can make a big difference. Now, in today's day and age in which cruise prices are really high, any money you can save is well worth it. Essentially, as long as the price drops for the same ship and sail day and same groom category you're in that you booked previously and you're before final payment, then you can definitely get a price adjustment for that, again, through your travel agent. Final payment date for most cruises is 90 days before sailing. And the strategy for booking early and taking advantage of a price drop ensures you're always going to have the lowest price as opposed to trying to wait for a price drop later and then try to time it and jump back in to book it. Another really good hack is to use a breakfast room service as a wake-up call. While room service does have a fee, there is still a complimentary continental breakfast option available to you. Or you can just splurge for the one that costs extra. Whichever one you choose, not only are you going to get your Danish's coffee and breakfast to use to get started in the morning, actually a lot of cruisers will order room service for breakfast as a sort of wake-up call. Prior to the breakfast being delivered, room service will call ahead to ensure that somebody is awake and that provides a good impetus for you, of course, to get up and get ready to start planning your day. This next hack is something that really did change my life. It's sheer genius for anybody that loves ice cream. On all Royal Caribbean ships, there's a complimentary soft serve ice cream available somewhere on board. Usually it's near the pool decks and there are ice cream cones available to pour ice cream onto. Ice cream cones are great and all, but you really cannot load them up too much without an incredibly elevated risk of it all falling over and you becoming that guy. For those that want to load up ice cream without multiple trips to the machine, I'm looking at you, Jenna, grab a drink cup from somewhere else on board. Usually, there are water cups at the wind jammer, and they're perfect for this. Take that cup, go to the ice cream machine, and then fill that as much as you like with the soft serve. The result is that ice cream fix you've always dreamed of without having to worry about it all falling over. If you want to take it to the next level, grab a soda with your drink package, and then make an ice cream float. Another great food hack is at Perfect Day at Coco Key. If your cruise visits Coco Key, be sure to stop by the Snack Shack for not only the awesome food on the menu, but a few added items not listed there. Known as the secret menu, you can ask for a chicken parmesan sandwich, which essentially is a cross between the crispy chicken sandwich on the menu, the mozzarella sticks, and a marinara sauce that are already available. Not only is this added menu option most guys don't know about, it's also really good. And then you also know that at Sorrento's, you can actually get an entire pie of pizza. Certainly, they have slices of pizza pretty much all day, but you might not have known you can customize the pizza at a special station. You can place an order for no additional cost for a pizza with just the toppings that you want and then have the custom pie come out hot and ready for you to eat fairly quickly. Moreover, you can also request a gluten-free crust option after you place the order, head across the promenades, maybe the pub, enjoy a drink, and then wait for the pizza to be ready. One cruise hack that's worked really well for our family is to stock up on cereal for shore excursions. If you got kids, be sure to grab a few extra boxes of the packaged cereal that comes from the Windjammer to bring back to your room. Box cereal is really tasty and a portable snack that works really well for shore excursions. Whether the kids want something to munch on during those bus rides or at the beach, pre-packaged cereal will not go bad in the heat and travels really well. If you run into a problem before your cruise, I have a question about your cruise or just can't seem to get an answer, maybe reaching out to Royal Caribbean via social media is another great hack. When you have a question about your upcoming Royal Caribbean cruise, your natural instinct may be to pick up the phone or send an email. But I've actually found that you get equally good service at faster speed by reaching out to Royal Caribbean social media channels. The social media team at Royal Caribbean are not only rock stars whose job it is to promote new and exciting things, but they also respond to customer queries. If you have a question, consider sending a tweet to Royal Caribbean on their Twitter page or sending a message to Royal Caribbean's official Facebook page to get an answer there. Their social media team routinely answers questions at a pretty good pace and go to great lengths to get you an answer. No hold music required. How about that drink package? Yeah, the alcohol drink package I'm talking about. If you buy it for yourself, you know that any other adults in your room need to buy the alcohol package as well, but you can get around that, kind of. Now that rule is fine if every adult in the room wants to get the alcohol package, but what if someone doesn't want to consume it or can't consume alcohol before the cruise? Call a Royal Caribbean and explain that you'd like to purchase the deluxe beverage package, but someone else in your room does not want it. While not an official policy, in every instance that I've ever tried it, the cruise line will allow you to purchase the Royal Refreshment Package, aka the non-alcoholic package, instead for that person. This helps save money on what would otherwise have been a drink package that the person would not have been able to fully utilize. One other hack to consider as it relates to the drink package is if you're traveling with kids. So let's assume for a second that you're going to be getting more than one room. In this situation, you actually would be advantageous for you to put the adult or one adult with one kid in the cabin. So as an example, if you booked the rooms such that the adults were in one room and the kid or kids were in another room, the problem is you'd run into that rule we just talked about in which one adult gets a drink package, the other adult in the same cabin has to get it. But if you have one kid, aka a minor, 
with an adult in the room, then you can just get the alcoholic drink package for yourself and not have to get a second drink package at all. And if you're wondering about how to put a kid, a minor, in a room by themselves, usually you can't unless they're adjacent or connecting cabins to a room in which their adult is there, then that's actually allowed. So I guess that's technically two hacks in one. If you happen to be on an Oasis class ship, check out the free breakfast at Johnny Rockets. You can go to Johnny Rockets for breakfast and pay absolutely nothing extra to enjoy a hearty American style breakfast. But again, this is only on Oasis class ships like Oasis Allure, Harmony, Symphony, Wonder, Utopia, and the seventh Oasis class ship. Johnny Rockets is open for breakfast and charges nothing extra for guests to enjoy eggs, bacon, toast, pancakes, and more. Now, Johnny Rockets does retain a cover charge for lunch and dinner, but most people are completely unaware that Johnny Rockets is open for breakfast and it's complimentary for only breakfast. If you're a family and you got kids that are cruising with you before you book a suite, one of my favorite hacks is to actually book two connecting cabins instead. So it may seem natural to want to book one cabin for your family because that's usually how that goes when you're booking a hotel on land. The problem is suites are well expensive as you might imagine. And I find that you can actually get a better setup with kids if you actually book two connecting rooms instead. Rather than paying for a suite, book two connecting smaller cabins and you'll get separation from your kids, different living situation, right? An additional bathroom, so two bathrooms total. And the best part is a common door in between. So that way you can still be with your kids, but not in the same room as them. This is such a game changer when your kids are younger and you can't have them in a completely different room that isn't connected to each other. But obviously a suite has a substantially higher price. Booking two connecting cabins is such a boon. It really makes a big difference. And it's one of my favorite family cruise hacks out there. Speaking of cruise ship cabins, if you're going on an older roller coaster cruise ship, actually when I say older, I mean pretty much any ship that is like Wonder of the Seas and newer, make sure you pack a European power adapter so that we have more outlets in there. Cruise cabins, especially those on older ships, are not equipped with many charging ports. In fact, you should not be surprised if you find that there's only one European and two American outlets on some ships like Freedom and Navigator of the Seas. Even if you only have two people in your cabin, you may start bickering over who gets to charge their phone, smartwatch, etc. at any given time. To better prepare, you can either purchase a European power adapter or a cruise line approved power strip. Check out the comments for a link for some of those items that you can purchase on Amazon. Another great cruise cabin hack is to store your suitcases underneath your bed. Once you finish unpacking your bags, push them underneath your bed. This is a great place to keep them during your cruise as you won't have to worry about tripping over them or having them roll around in your closet. Moreover, that means it's not gonna take up valuable closet space because again, storage space on cruise ships is very limited. Depending on how many people you have in staying in your room and the total number of suitcases you have, you may want to bring stacking suitcases. These pieces of luggage fit inside one another, meaning that there's less floor space taken up. And my final cruise hack brings us back to Perfect Day at Coco Key and how to avoid long lines. Lines for those water slides, that is, because Thrill Water Park is a great water park where you're going to find some amazing water slides. And as you might imagine, well, a lot of other people on your sailing are going to want to try them out too. So if you want to enjoy these slides with a minimal weight, try to hit the slides either before 11 a.m. or after 3 p.m. If you get up early, you can usually get those slide rides in before everybody else shows up or simply wait a little later in the afternoon right after lunch. A lot of people start heading back to the ship because they're tired and they have to get ready for dinner. They want to take a nap, every all those things, right? So you find a lot of less of a line in that last hour that the park is open. So there you have all of my best Royal Caribbean cruise hacks that I think will help make your vacation just a little bit better. I hope some of these will help you out as well. Let me know in the comments below your favorite cruise hacks, which you've tried, and which of these you're going to be trying on your next sailing. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button, make sure you subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.